Hey everybody, Derek here from Badgerland Birding. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the eBird app. And the first thing to do is to download the app on your phone. I have it here um, and we're going to be screen recording the whole thing so you can see what I'm doing on the app as well. We're not going to pay attention to how many unread emails I have, um, but we are going to go through all the features of the eBird app. So the first thing is to download it. You can make an account. It just needs a username, password, and email, I believe. Uh, it's free. And then once you have it, we can open it up and then it'll have the date, uh, start time, a record track option. So that's if you want it to record like where you go, it creates a little map and you can see how many miles you walked, which is really cool. So the first thing we're gonna do is hit start checklist and it has the correct time. And then I'm gonna select the location right away. So under the hotspots, we have the Nickel State University Farm, which is where we are today in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Gonna hit use this location. And what's nice about that is it normally tells you what birds are more common or uncommon in that certain area. So it kind of helps you narrow things down already. Um, I can hear an Eastern Towhee calling already. So we are going to type in Eastern Towhee and then it pops up. It says it's infrequent, but they're fairly common here at this time of year. It also shows you what birds are rare. So infrequent is gonna be the orange half circles and then rare is the red circles. And then sometimes it also has the R next to it in the square, which indicates rare, R for rare. So Eastern Tohi, we'll put one, we hit cancel, and then we can keep going on kind of our trek. So we're gonna walk around just a little bit of land, see what we hear today. There's some chimney swifts calling. Just gonna add those real quick. Cardinals. Red winged blackbird. We're gonna keep going. And this is really nice because some, if you're anything like me, sometimes you go birding and you're like, oh, I'll e-bird it later, and then you never do. So this helps make sure you do it because you're doing it while you're birding. Very vocal red wings. There's one sitting up, so we'll get, we'll get a shot of him, or some video maybe. Just heard another towhee. More cardinals. There's a couple whistling ducks, it looks like. Black bellied whistling ducks. Two whistling ducks. Let's see if maybe we can get eyes on a few more species. Carolina wren. See if we can scope him out. There's a big brush pile over here I bet he's in. There he is. Very distant Carolina run. All right, so for our little checklist we just made, we're gonna hit stop if we were stopping the checklist here. Gonna hit stop track. We got the time, so six minutes. It recorded our miles, 1.5 miles, and you can actually see a little map of where you've been, which I always think is really cool. And when you publish it, it's not going to be, the public isn't going to be able to see your map. So we close observers to me and Claire. Claire's videotaping for me today. And then I'm going to share the checklist with her right away. There's kind of a weird thing where if you share, if you submit the checklist from the app without sharing it, you can't do it from the app. You have to actually go to like Safari or something else and share it from there. For some reason you can't do it. So I'm going to hit share checklist, Claire Galloway. And then, is this a complete checklist of the birds you were able to identify? Yes, it was. We can go through the species, but if we wanted to add comments, we can put Eastern towhee, herd only. You can also add breeding information. And then that all looks good, so shared. Six minutes, if um, it was a stationary checklist or something like that, 
you can go add that in as well. And if you don't have the track on, you have to add the miles by hand and sometimes the time too. So we're gonna hit submit. Checklist is gonna be shared, hit okay. And now that checklist is in eBird. So I'm also gonna go through, say I wanted to do a checklist from earlier. So we'll say if I was doing some birding at like, we'll go 3.25 p.m. You'd hit start checklist and then you'd have to input the location again. So we'll say, hypothetically, it's at the Nichols farm. And then we can add in our observations. So we'll just hypothetically put some stuff in here. Hit review, and then you have the options to do if it was traveling. If you traveled further than 30 meters, stationary, you traveled less than 30 meters. Incidental, if you just happen to run into a bird or other. And then you would hit, oh, we'll say traveling for this. And if I hit the little clock on minutes, it's gonna put it from when the checklist started to now. So you can do that, or you can add in if it was like an hour, and then we could put in how many miles we went. So if um, you didn't like specifically go out and identify everything you saw, you could hit no, or if it's like an incidental checklist, I think it makes you hit no. Um, but we're not gonna submit this because this is just hypothetical, but if it was really, you'd hit continue to submit. If it's a rare species, it's probably gonna add, ask you to add details. So you can add details about the bird, indicate if you have any photos of it. And I don't believe you can add media from the app. So you'll have to go in later and add that media. Um, there's the Merlin Bird ID app kind of attached to this too. So if you're on eBird and you want info about the species, you can hit that, which is kind of cool too. But that's an intro to how to use the eBird mobile app. I actually really love using it in the field. One of the downsides is if you don't have reception, it's not always able to like load everything or get that map. So if you can start a checklist when you do have reception, sometimes they get it to work as you're going out. And then when you get back into reception, it'll kind of like link it back up and then it'll work. But it's kind of hit or miss in those situations. Also, because it's on your phone, you have to make sure that you have enough battery power to get it to work the whole time. So there are pros and cons to it. I think it's really cool. I think every birder should use it. And uh, it's great if you want to get checklists done right away because you can do it in the field and then have it submitted. And uh, then you don't have to worry about it later. So I like to do a bunch of checklists throughout the day on the app, then go in, add pictures and stuff later, and it works out really well. So I hope you found this useful. Let me know if you've used the app uh, in the comments and your experiences with it. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. There's a bird. Hopefully it stops so we can get a look. It went down in the field, so probably not going to be able to get a look at that one. There's something else, though. Come on, stop. They're all going in the thick stuff right now.